Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Night Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Knight here, and tonight we will start a new Proverbs, Proverbs 21, Part 1. But before we start, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for getting us all on this evening. We thank you for this technology, and we just uh, lift this study over to you. We ask you to just uh, anoint it and bless it tonight. Uh, give us all good revelation. Let us just have a fun, wonderful time in your word. And we know that um, we want to hear from you tonight, Lord. So we just surrender this all to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, Proverbs 21, verse 1. It says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the river of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any comments? And just remember, whenever you submit to authority, what you're doing is trusting that God will guide that authority however God wants it to go, right? That's right. Amen. That's that's the reward. You get the reward for trusting God. Amen. I can't think of a better place for the king's heart or anyone's heart to be <laughs> except in the hand of the Lord. <coughs> Amen. You know, we, we always say that God is in control of everything. He's in control of us and our hearts and um, this is what we surrender everything to him and we pray and just lift it all up to him amen However, the, the kings is you have to get closer pastor rufus oh sir okay yeah what i want to say is that the king is there to do God's will also. And so more importantly, uh, his, his heart is, has to be in the hand, hand of the Lord. And because he has other people that he is in charge of. And, and so it's, it's like, uh, in, in, in some case, a, a leader in the church, uh, their hearts, their hearts, uh, need to be in the hands of the Lord Amen. Because, because they teach others. Yeah. It's kings, it's said kings, it's all of us. Our hearts are in the hand of the Lord for sure. That's true. All of us. You know, we know David was a man after God's own heart, that's for sure. He probably wrote this proverb, actually. But, um, Man plans his own way, but God orders his steps. That's right. And that's all about the heart. I mean, that's where God dwells in our hearts. Amen. Any other comments? In Ezra 6, verse 22. And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good yeah. man. Praise the Lord. And turn their heart. Any other comment? Yes, we see that this group was serving a special purpose because they they, they were uh, they were doing work on, on on the house of God as as well, and so they had they had special assignment there, and See bread seven days of joy for the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Syria toward them to strengthen, yeah, to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God. 
yet. Uh, okay. I I may have not seen that exactly the way it should go the, the, the first time. But uh, but we see here again that that's the roof is you have to get closer. Yes. Uh, so Okay, good. We can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay, you can hear me now. Okay, great. So yes, uh the the king has has uh other people in his care and and so uh and so he strengthened their hands with his word and his but that God gives to him. Amen. 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 Any other comment? Yeah. First two. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Amen. 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 Comments. Well, I mean, again, we know that there is nothing that is kept secret from God. He knows us so intimately. There is there is nothing that he doesn't know about us, and not just about us, but even about those who don't even seek him. He knows everything in the heart of every man and woman and child. And um, that whole, that line, the Lord weighs the hearts. He, he studies the hearts of, of all of us. And, and um, yeah, the first part of it is, you know, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. The Lord, um, he, he sees the mistakes. He sees the wrong direction, the tendencies of um, human beings to follow the flesh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He, he holds the heart. He, he holds does. the heart in his hand. So therefore he... He weighs, he knows the heart because he holds it. You know, and we, we can see too that man does think he's right in his own eye, but we understand that it's, you know, all about the Lord who weighs our heart, who, you know, cleanses our heart. And he looks inside of our heart and he gets rid of those things that's that's not good in our hearts. And he brings us to this place where, you know, he wants us to be. And so, um, as Pastor Steve said about directing the path over the birth, man. Man is way, but the Lord orders his steps. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. <clears throat> man has always tried to make his own way and direct his own path. But we know that it's God that orders our steps. And um, he does that through our hearts. I don't know if it was what was already mentioned because I got distracted, but <clears throat> I mean, which one is there any of us who don't think we got it all figured out? I mean, when it, of course, we think about like biblical things, no, but we, we, it is our nature think that we know what's best, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the human. Condition, condition, ego, everything. Yeah, and and it doesn't matter what our age is. I mean, we talk to a teenager and they got it all figured out. Talk to somebody in their thirties, they got it all figured out. They go on and go on. Yeah, but the truth is, none of us know. I think that's right, except God, and that's why you just just letting God lead is the, the wisest move we could ever make. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes um, 
you know, it's a blessing for me to realize that God keeps me in a place where I know I can't do anything without him. He, he just, I mean, if you, if I go throughout my life and I think of all the different events of my life and the different things that happened to me, he's always kept me in a place where I always felt an urgency towards needing him and knowing that I can't, I can't stand without him. And, and there, I know there are people in the world who are successful and, and, you know, their children are doing well, they're doing well, everybody's doing well. And they don't have that sense, that need of God. They don't, they don't sense their need of God, though, of course, it is there anyway, because there's a vacancy in everyone that will, will come out at some point. But I, I consider it a blessing um, that God has kept me with my back against the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Hey. <laughs> he knows what I'm saying. Um, yeah. All right, any other comments? In Luke 16, verse 15, and he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Man always has an answer, but it's never a good one. You think they have it all figured out, but without God, it's an abomination in his sight. Without God doing it. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Okay, verse three. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. So, who was it that he told that obedience is better than sacrifice? Anybody remember that verse? That was uh, Sa um, Samuel telling Saul that. Right, exactly. Because he was supposed to wipe out the Amalekites and he didn't do what God told him to do. Uh, exactly, yes, that's the one, Pastor. And he that's said he... Uh, he kept all the livestock and the animals to give a sacrifice. And then Samuel told him that it was better to be obedient than to, to obey God than any sacrifice. Which is coming up in the next slide. Any other comments? So what does this say for us? I mean, if God is telling us to do something, we should just be obedient to him. And that's what's acceptable and pleasing to him, to just be obedient. Sometimes we uh, have to do things that we uh, don't want to do. or We don't feel we should, but in the end, it's better to just obey. And that is acceptable to the Lord. Amen. And we have to trust in him that it's all going to turn out okay, and, and no matter what. That's, and that's the key. The difficult things that God tells us or calls us to do, we have to trust him. Amen. Amen. 
Any other comments? Yes, uh, his that is his knowing that his rever reverence, having reverence for God, having fear of God. That is so. Therefore, we we um, we we follow his word, his his desires. Not a, have we have reverence for him and and so no matter what what we think no matter how good we think it is uh it's better to follow god what he says or look to him and ask him don't depend on our own thoughts yeah like on the last verse and seeing things in our own eyes. Well, you know, the way we see things and the way God sees things is probably two diff totally two different things. Yes, absolutely. Praise the Lord. Any other comment? I guess true righteousness and justice comes from being spirit-led. Because again, we may think we know what's right, but if we are spirit led, if we're seeking God, <coughs> then we can trust that His work is going to be righteous and just. It is. Amen. Amen. Okay. In Matthew 12, verse 7, but if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. Amen. 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 Yeah. Mercy fits right in there with righteousness and justice. <clears throat> um, in this verse um, this is Jesus talking I believe and he's uh, he's saying I desire mercy and not sacrifice so he is desiring for us to be merciful he'd rather us be merciful to one another and rather than a sacrifice from us um, and it says I desire mercy and not sacrifice you would not have condemned the guiltless. Yeah. So he he's really telling us that we need to be merciful to one another. And um, when we judge those that well, we have no right to judge, and even those that we may judge are guilt-free. And, um, you know, in lieu of everything that's going on, um oh gosh everything that's going on over there in the holy land uh this is some a very powerful verse um there's just so much um so much need in the world for people to show mercy to one another amen amen Yes, there is. Yeah, in the context of uh, this this verse here, it's when uh, the uh, Pharisees saw were accusing, "Look, your disciples are not doing what's not lawful to do on the Sabbath," because they were hungry and plucking heads of grain. So <clears throat> they were busy pointing out what they were doing wrong on the Sabbath instead of showing mercy that they were hungry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 4. A haughty look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Plowing of the wicked. Allowing of the wicked. 
It's a word. Plowing of the wicked. <laughs> I have a version up, um, the Berean version, haughty eyes and a proud heart. The guides of the wicked are sin. So I want to understand this word plowing. Uh, when I see this, I think of, you know, the word is always using farming as examples. You plow the soil, you plant the seeds, you water it. And so plowing to me is like the the work of the wicked, the, the things that they spend their time doing and establishing. Mm -hmm. right. I'm a fan of the sword to do evil, I guess, huh? in this um, sense. Well, there, there, are, there are, the plowing of the wicked is probably teaching people the wrong thing, things that are not godly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lifting up things that are, you know, abominations to God and the way of the world, really, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what they're teaching in schools now. To me, that's the plowing of the wicked. It's like reinforcing the wrong teaching, you know. Yeah. In some schools, in some schools, yeah. And Many right now, yeah. <clears throat> Things that are against God, so. No. And parents have no say so about it. I know when I was raising my kids, it was it was a huge burden and sacrifice to send them to a Christian school, but that's the only way to protect our children from being taught things that are not of God is to have them in a Christian environment. Amen. <clears throat> Any other comments? In Luke 11, verse 34, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Amen. 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 <laughs> Any comments? You know, when you look into the eyes of a person, you can really see a lot. You know, a lot of people, like just in daily um, communications, just daily things that they do, even whether it's going into a grocery store, a lot of people don't make eye contact. Um, and and I, uh, someone told me many years ago, uh, and this was a man that worked in the prison system. And there was a time when I was concerned about my, my son. And this man told me, he said, your son has eyes that are full of light. And he said, I work in a system where it's the, the, I look into the eyes of people and they're cold. They're just cold. They're, they're, um, there's nothing there almost it's like people who have just done so many things or been treated so poorly in their lives you know maybe been been um uh, um uh, what is the word been abused it can turn a person cold and you can see it when you look in their eyes and so god uh <laughs> He has made our eyes the lamp to see within, 
to see into our hearts in a sense. I hope, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but um, I, I've experienced, you know, many years of dealing with the public and uh, I, I can tell a lot of times when I look into the eyes of a person, I can see if, if there's life there, if there's true love and um, compassion. Uh, anyway, I, I just wanted to share that when I was thinking, because I was very worried about Raymond for, uh, for a, a time. And, um, and this, this man that worked in the prison system that knew our family, he said, no, he said, Raymond, he has warmth and love in his eyes and not to worry. You know, I mean, he was just a teenager, but you know, he was kind of like going off track a little bit. Amen. Yeah, you can tell a lot by seeing, looking in people's eyes. Your eyes is the window of your soul. Amen, sister. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Okay, verse five. The plan of the diligent leads surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Amen. Any comments? So, yes, um, I've been looking at this word hasty. I, I don't see a, a, what's the difference? Well, I know what diligent means, but hasty, is that being in a hurry? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's it, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> just overlooking things, not, not paying attention, just passing yeah. by. Well, uh, yeah, I, I want to add to that that... Mm, Usually, when you are making quick decisions, we're not taking the time to seek the Lord, to seek godly counsel. We're just reacting on our own wisdom or emotion, and we just react. And generally, it's not going to be the same. That's why the word says, "In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He'll order your steps." Right. Right. Taking the time to seek God and uh, seek godly counsel. Well, we should never ever be in a rush to make right. any kind of decisions. And you're right as far as you know seeking the Lord for sure. And counsel. Confirmation. Confirmation. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Excuse me. We know that making quick decisions usually does lead to things not going well. Uh, we, we've seen that many times. And um, we know to always seek confirmation and seek the Lord. Any other comments? In Proverbs 10, verse 4, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Amen. 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 Any comments?
it seems that that slack, a slack hand is the hand of a lazy man, a lazy person has a slack hand and therefore becomes poor because you don't get much done with a slack hand. I agree, Pastor Rufus. Amen. <clears throat> In the hand of the diligent, the one that works is made rich. Obviously, in the material world, that that is definitely applicable. But also, I believe that whether it's being in the Word and or serving God or whatever, and or or, or not doing it, ultimately we become poor, poor in spirit if we're not. But it can't be our works. It got to be. It's got to be God led, right? Amen. <clears throat> There's a verse that says, "Those who diligently seek Me will find Me." Right. That's right. Praise the Lord. You know, as I look at this verse, in, in um, a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Okay, if you look at the ways of the world, there are many people who work diligently, and they never become rich. You know, there are people who are working at very low wages and Sometimes they have to work two jobs in order to make ends meet and no health benefits. And so it's like God is saying his way is a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. But in the way of the world, that gets all mixed up. It's like for everything of God, there's a counterfeit that Satan will put forth. In our world that we live in, there are, are plenty of people who cheat and maybe could be considered to have a slack hand, but they're cheating and they're, you know, doing okay. I, I just wanted to know, um, am I looking at this the right way? I'm kind of seeing this verse as this is God's way. A slack hand becomes poor and the hand of the diligent makes rich. But in the way of the world, it can sometimes get very complex and turned around and mixed up so that people who work the hardest gain the least. And people who cheat and scheme don't really, it's cheat, learning how to cheat and scheme. That's the way of the world. And, and you can make money by doing that, by taking advantage of other people. So God's way is pretty plain and clear. You, if you work and you're diligent, you you will you will do okay. But if you're lazy, you'll be poor. Amen. That's not the kind of definitely God's way we're looking for. That's that that that. Uh... We can't hear you, Pastor Rufus. Well, what I'm saying is. Uh, on his comment be, reflects a different kind of getting rich or work and 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 uh the world's way but that's that's this verse is is, is speaking of this in a different way can hear you uh, speaks to the center <laughs> that work okay um okay this is better <laughs> yes okay so um Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm saying that uh, this slack hand is 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 kind of spiritually discerned here. Um, he who has a slack hand means not not pursuing the the things of God, and uh, and as 
Pastor Knight mentioned, uh, as the word said, those who diligently seek God finds him and, and the ways of God. But it requires a little effort, diligence. And, and so I believe that's where this verse is, is, is focused on, uh, not, not so much uh, a worldly way versus a godly way. I think it's just mm-hmm. pointing to one way here. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, verse six. Getting treasures by a lying tongue is the fleeting fancy of those who seek death. Just what Sister Joanna was saying. Exactly. (laughs) They may seem to get ahead in this world, but the end without repentance is death. Absolutely. And you know, there are many people who got ahead in this world by lying, cheating, stealing, being deceitful, and all those things. And you know, but you know, it will come to nothing and death is in their future. So it says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Amen. But it also says it, it doesn't last because it's a fleeting fantasy. Yes. Oh yeah, the, a fall will happen, or, or you know, they will get caught, or you know, with the deceitfulness comes to light, and yeah, mm-hmm. it's a fleeting fancy, for sure. Any other comments? In Proverbs 13, verse 11, wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Amen. 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 Just as you were saying, Pastor Rufus. It doesn't always say when it will be diminished. (laughs) A person could have... Uh, uh, you can't hear you, Sister Joanna. Okay, sorry. <laughs> a, a person, uh, in this verse, it doesn't say when it will be diminished. Because we know in the world, people can gain enormous amount of wealth by being dishonest. But eventually, the Lord is going to gonna take all the veils away and, and the, the truth is going to come out and their wealth will be diminished. But God will God will increase those who labor honestly. And you know, this is also in a spiritual sense. Um, you can you can be wealthy and rich spiritually. And there there might even be situations where People will use, uh, try to put a spiritual uh, mask on, um, but God is the one who is going to, he is going to reveal all of the the dishonesty and all of those who have been deceitful and maybe he even deceived some, some of our um, brothers and sisters, you know. Um, he he's going to reveal all that. We have a, a, a hope in that, and um, that that if we seek God honestly and we try to be His hands and feet as He wants us to be, He wants us to be His. He wants uh, He wants us to do His will and to be His hands and feet, and that 
type of labor God will bless. Amen. It's a it's a spiritual labor. If that makes any sense. Of course. <laughs> Well, we know these things happen all over this wealth by the sinus game. It happens in businesses, it happens in churches, it happens in people, and it happens all over. Mm -hmm. You know, scams and, you know, they all kinds of things that's gaining wealth by dishonest means, you know, but, but like Pastor Rufus said, it, 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 it doesn't last. And like this verse said, it will diminish. And um, and then and before the verse, it talked about even death. So it's this. It's like Pastor Nike said, "Vengeance is the Lord, and the wicked do not get away with anything. They will have to uh, stand before God and be judged for the actions and honesty and all the things that they've done. Amen. Those who they've done it to, you know." So, um, and like you said, Sister Joanna, it, it, we don't know when those things will happen, but you can count on eventually. The word says they will happen. Amen. Amen. You know, he who gathers by labor, who he who stays in God's presence will Amen. increase. Those who continue to follow him and do his will. That's the increase. Amen. He, he has for those who put their trust in him. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse seven. The violence of the wicked will destroy them, but they refute to, refute to do justice. The violence of wicked will destroy them. And we see a lot of this today. You know, all the violence and the wickedness that is happening in our world. Because they refuse to do justice. Well, we know that they don't have the Lord in their life, so. It's because we know that only God is just. Amen. Any comments? In Micah 3, verses 8 to 12. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Now hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build up Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with iniquity. Her heads judge for a bribe, her priests teach for pay, and her prophets divine for money. Yet they lean on the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? No harm can come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion, shall be plowed like a field, Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the mountains of the temple like the bare hills of the forest. Wow. Those are some very strong verses. Perhaps maybe even speaking of the times that we're living in. Yeah. 
Thinks a lot about what's happening now. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, if you look at the two sides of the issue that's going on now, neither side has accepted Jesus Christ. And I don't know if I'm not looking at this properly, but I can only see what's happening. And when I read a scripture like this, it just, it, it speaks to my heart and it tells me there's something missing from the, the relationship that Israel has to the Lord and that, the, that missing piece is Jesus Christ. And of course, the other side is totally devoid of, you know, they have their Allah, right? But this, this turmoil and the pain and the killing and the murderous activity is happening between two groups of people that do not know Jesus Christ. Amen. Or have denied him. Correct me if I need correction, but I just, I'm struggling with what's going on. I'm really struggling with this, the loss of life and the loss of innocent people on both sides. And it's, uh, I'm struggling with this. But I have to say today, my son, I talked to Raymond and he said, mom, when I see this going on, it just reminds me of all the Bible that I studied growing up. That this, this war and rumors of war and all the, all the, the killing. And he said, it's, it's, the Bible tells us about this. I didn't quite know what to say to him. I was a little shocked, but um, you know, I, I guess I, Personally, I need some guidance about how to, to understand and assimilate what's going on. But it's clear to me that whether you be Palestinian or whether you be Israeli, you have not accepted Jesus Christ, the atoning blood of Christ. And this turmoil is happening between these groups. Well, the Hamas obviously haven't accepted Jesus Christ. Some Jews have accepted Jesus Christ. So just because they're Jewish doesn't mean they haven't. But what I noticed, I mean, to me, and I'm, I, I've am i spent most of my time traveling, so I, I'm not too immersed in it, but I think of the Old Testament, the Philistines and the Israelites, the Book of Judges, and how when the Israelites cried out to the Lord, God redeemed them and, and got rid of the Philistines for a while, but then they forgot the Lord and they started, you know, doing pagan things again. And, and then God allowed them to be attacked and taken over. And to me, it, it kind of just reminds me of that. The, uh, but, but I'm not here to judge anybody, but some of the facts, like what I've seen so far, that, that concert with all the young people where that's like where well, they really came in and did this it was a worldly concert that went all night on the sabbath mm. right and so oh wow god allows things why god allows things so we will turn back to him yes so if my people who are called by my name would turn and pray and seek my face you know right and so they're not doing that unless there's adversity. And hopefully they will do it and not just lean on their own might because it won't work. You know, I'm waiting to hear, and maybe there is, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I don't have too much time on, on a screen, but 
you know, if the leaders will turn to God and, and you know, and like Nineveh, right? The king of Nineveh told everybody, repent. Mm -hmm. Lord, right? That's right. And so, you know, hopefully they're going to seek the Lord and ask him to be the one to, to deliver them. And um, from, if, from that, what you just said, Pastor Steve, um, it really points up the fact that there are cultural Jews and there are religious Jews. There are Jews who are spiritual Jews who keep the Sabbath. Uh, in in word and truth and and then there's the cultural aspect of being a jew and obviously if i didn't even think about this concert and i i think it was on a holiday too a, a yom kippur uh it it was uh, the day of atonement yeah, yeah. Uh, if i'm not yeah. mistaken yeah, I'm not sure. and, there is a holiday yes yeah, so that just kind of points to the fact that it's like in every religion, okay, I grew up Catholic. There are people who are culturally Catholic. They will be Catholic no matter what happens. They will be Catholic because that's how they grew up. They may not even really be convicted of the truth of Christ, but there's cultural people who are culturally Christian and there are people who are truly spiritually Christian and that holds true with probably any faith that is in the world today. Some who are just, just live on the culture of being Jewish. They live in Israel, they're, they're Jewish, but they don't keep the Sabbath and all of that. So that's something that God, that was really profound what you just said to me because it made me understand something because I had had questions in my mind. What was this music festival? And, you know, what was it all about? And you, you pointed up, it was a worldly festival taking place on the Sabbath on a, 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 a holy day. Uh, and, um, yeah, anyway, thank you. Uh, that kind of clarifies some things for me. Amen. Well, yeah, it's just the only thing that came to my mind, what little bit I've seen about what's going on there. But again, you know, I mean, we're all guilty. I don't want to be judgmental and say, ah, oh, they didn't honor the Sabbath, so they died, because that's not the right answer. No. But... But yeah, it does kind of speak to the state of where they are in walking with God, just like this nation and where we are turning from God and the things we face because of it as well. Yeah. America calls itself a Christian nation, but hey. <laughs> yeah. So. Also, the, the uh, most holy day in the. Can hear you, Pastor Rufus. That Yom Kippur. Was is considered the most holy day, the Day of Atonement for the for the Jews, and so not only was it the Sabbath, but it was the 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 great the most holy day of the year in the, in the Jewish religion, and so that is extra uh, meaning or avoidance of, of their faith is to. Uh, the uh the concert and and i don't know how that you know fits in or makes it wrong but uh but but yes it, it it's almost like they they ignore the the day of atonement and as far as the jews are concerned they didn't practice the things that they normally practice and i know in 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 the book we read that's when the, the, the priest has, uh, you know, does things, goes into, into the Holy of Holies. And, and uh, but now I'm not sure what that translates into now in today's day. Okay. Any other comments?
Okay, I think we can stop here for tonight. Um, any other comments before we close in prayer? Okay, well, let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this word. Thank you for bringing us all here tonight. And uh, we thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you given us all this evening and we just pray that you uh, give us all good night rest tonight uh, get us ready for the Sabbath day tomorrow and just um, bless us, guide us and just uh, continue to love us Lord in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Amen, Amen. God bless you all Amen. God bless God bless God bless so Pastor Rufus, let's do